Welcome to Sports News. Members of the silver-winning Falknet team have returned home after an impressive outing at the under-20 FIFA Women's World Cup in Canada. Upon arrival, Coach Peter Dedewa urged the Nigeria Football Federation to ensure that the team is retained and given a place in the Super Falcons. The Minister of Sports, Tammy Danagogo, promised that President Goodluck Jonathan will host them at the State House soon. I suppose to our first man. I told them that they asked me how far will the team go. I said the team will do extremely well in the tournament. But I didn't mention the team will win the tournament. We win the tournament. But I said the team will do extremely well, extremely well in the tournament. So, so what you Nigeria and expect from the team? It depends on how the federation takes this team. Start to promote the team, promote those that are supposed to go to Super Falcons. Then those that are supposed to be in the 20, still leave them there. Then, then invite some other players to join those in the 20. They will start begin. begin we begin a preparation in NS. Well, I never thought of it, but uh, before the competition started, when we were leaving Nigeria, I just told myself that I have to prove myself and put in all my best just to make sure I come out to the rest of the competition. I think I, the assignment I gave myself, I did it perfectly well. Yeah, I believe we will go places because we have a couple of good players, very intelligent players, and I wish if the Federation will keep the team together so that we can blend more. So when we go to a tournament like this, we will perform better than we just did. Well, the General Assembly of the Nigeria Football Federation expected to draw a roadmap that will lead to credible elections into the NFF Executive Committee has left the nation's football family further divided. Now, the detention of the NFF President Aminu Megiri. Musa Amadu and a key member of the board, Chris Green, sets the stage for another day of drama in the glass house. The crisis rocking the leadership of the Nigerian Football Federation appear to be deepening by the day if events in Abuja is anything to go by. Scheduled to begin at 2 p.m., the first signs that all is not well with the proposed Congress was the report of the detention of the NFF President Amino Megiri, the General Secretary Musa Amadou, and Barrister Chris Green by officials of the Department of State Service. No Congress will proceed without them, and indeed the soul of the business, which is the General Secretary, uh, headed by the General Secretary. So the Chairman decided to go to DSS headquarters to find out what's going on, and they were stopped on the way by by um, armed mobile men, you know, and threatening to shoot members of the Congress. While all this was going on, there was an anxious wait at the venue of the Congress for enough delegates to arrive for the General Assembly to begin. So I will, I will say that you, it is, I think, in the best interest of everybody, including you and everybody, if you come, because we, we, we will address the situation and the exact truth of the matter and ensure that the, the proper action takes place. After waiting for about three hours, the Honorable Minister of Sports arrives to declare the General Assembly open. And guess what? He came with the General Secretary of the Nigerian Football Federation, Musa Amadou, who had been in detention. Next time we met you, you were very silent. I was silent. Why did it take that long to release the Honorable Minister? Why, if, if a man says he is resigning and it will be with effect from the end of his tenure, that is today, what, why, why the need you, you begin to announce it? Why not wait until the time? I'm a gentleman, let me tell you. Yeah, we know that. If a man says he is resigning by 26, my expectation is that it takes effect from 26, and that is the time you should make it public. But Megeri has, Megeri Clearly, has there are deeper crises still rocking Nigerian football. Nigerians will now be waiting anxiously for FIFA's verdict on the latest drama currently going on in the football house. Everton, stri Everton have signed their striker Samuel Eto'o, the Cameroonian international, on a two-year deal after he was released by Chelsea last season. Now Eto'o joins on a free transfer and links up with former Chelsea teammate Romelu Lukaku, who signed for the Toffees this summer. Everton boss Roberto Martinez said he is impressed with the hunger the 33-year-old Cameroonian still has for the game. He could make his debut against Mourinho and his former teammates at Chelsea, when both sides meet at Goodison Park on Saturday. Real Madrid have launched the club's new kit for the UEFA Champions League at the Bernabeu 
with the players at the unveiling, expressing their desire to make history by being the first team to win the trophy back to back. The new black kit, designed by Japanese designer and Adidas collaborator Yoji Yamamoto, features two dragons with origins in Eastern culture that represent the values of the club. The European champions who failed to win the Spanish La Liga last season are better prepared this time around to win the league and their 11th European Champions League title, as they say. And that will be it on Sports News. The rest of the news at, at 10 continues in a moment. Over now to the foreign scene where South Sudan already has a lot to deal with, but there's more. The UN says one of its cargo helicopters has crashed in South Sudan, with our confirmed report saying it was shot down. Now here's Cynthia Areh with more. Well, that seems to be the case. On Twitter, the UN mission in South Sudan said the MI-8 helicopter was on a routine mission when it went missing near Bentiu. But a UN official told the AP News Agency it had actually been shot down. Thousands of people who have been killed this year in bitter fighting between South Sudan's army and rebel forces. Then there might be reason to finally rejoice concerning the crisis in the Gaza Strip as Egypt has brokered an agreement on a long-term ceasefire between Israel and Palestinian militants in Gaza. Hamas negotiator Musa Marzouk confirmed the deal to end seven weeks of fighting that has left more than 2,200 people dead and it would be announced shortly. Also today, despite the treacherous activities on the part of the Islamic State militants in Iraq and Syria, the United States remains committed to conquering them. The U.S. President Barack Obama has now authorized surveillance flights over Syria in order to gain intelligence on the activities of IS, and the Syrian government has given him the go-ahead. Finally, Mother Nature is doing her thing again, and this time around it's in Iceland, where Badrabunga volcano was hit by a magnitude 5.7 earthquake this morning, and it is by far the largest since tremors began in the area last week. The country's Met Office said despite the shock, there's still no sign of a volcanic eruption. And those are the top stories on the foreign scene. Thanks a lot, Cynthia. And the main news again. The health minister, Professor Onyebu Chichuku, has announced the country's successful prevention of the spread of Ebola virus disease. Professor Chuku told journalists in Abuja that the only case remaining is currently undergoing treatment in one of the isolation wards in Lagos. And considering the effect of the Ebola virus disease in the country, the federal government today announced October the 14th as the new resumption date for both public and private schools in the country. Now this follows the meeting between the Minister of Education and the 36 State Commissioners for Education. The federal government has also suspended all summer programs run by private schools. Both public and private schools are also to train two members of staff to detect cases of Ebola. They are also to acquire the temperature device to check possible cases of Ebola among children. And the Enugu State's Deputy Governor, Sunday Onyebuchi, has been impeached for running a poultry farm in his official residence. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. Focus on Africa is up next. I'm Ijo Mahbunyato. Do have a good night.